we moved yesterday in 30 degree heat we ended up doing something like four miles and three locks we actually moved originally in search for a better position for the Wi-Fi because I needed to upload the video and there was no Wi-Fi where we were so we couldn't find anywhere suitable to moor that had shade as well <laughs> we ended up going way too far anyway we found somewhere got the video up uh, today we're heading into Middlewich and turning back onto the Shropshire Union uh, Canal the Middlewich Arm and uh, we just got three locks today um, we're getting a pump out and uh, do a bit of shopping. Enjoy. This area is renowned for its salt extraction. So as a consequence, there's quite a few ugly factories around and uh, also resulting in some serious subsidence in the past houses falling into pits there's massive mines in the Cheshire area underground that extend for miles just uh, to extract salt any town with which in its name such as Northwich, Middlewich uh, that means that uh, it's associated with the salt trade so there you go who knew Now this is King's Lock um, and obviously the King's Lock pub and that's the last pub that we were actually able to visit before lockdown and we went there for a lovely drink with Chris and Shell from Narrowboat Vlog, Chris and Shell and Robbie Cummings and I have somehow I've got to get behind here um, for pump out and I'm not quite sure if I've got to turn in or if it's difficult I can't see a thing but who knows, I'm at the tiller, so I'm sure it will all be okay. And added to that, there's a boat just coming out of the next canal. So be right in my way. So it's all good fun. Crashing and banging coming up. And lo and behold, the King's Lock Fish and Chip Shop. Um, the pub is still closed, but the benches are out. So it's Friday night, I might talk Rich into um, a quiet beer from home and fish and chips on the benches tonight. Do you think he's going to take much talking into it? Hmm, we'll see. Ready, Fran? <laughs> I actually feel a bit nervous about this one. You've got to go down here, backwards. And Fran's the best person for it, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not when the uh, gunnels have just been painted on one side. Mind the ducks. Yeah, added complications. Got the wind in your favour. Really? It's funny how the wind is always in my favour and against you, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's not going to be easy, is it? That's not good. We're not going to. We're not going to get past those two boats there, hun. Yeah, we will. That's the tightest I've ever seen you reverse in one. I'm not there yet, though. Not bad for a woman driver, eh? Just gotta get out of 
Hamilton. I get all flummoxed in a macho kind of way, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> you stay calm. So we've done everything that we needed to do over at uh, the boatyard, come through this little bridge and we are now officially on the Wardour Canal. Now the Wardour Canal is the shortest canal on the system. Rich is in that lock and the bridge in the distance is the end of the Wardour Canal. So I think we're going to be on it for all of 10 minutes. So that's the bridge. Here's the captain. Through the lock, and that's the end of the canal. So you've done a canal from beginning to end today. Three canals today as well. Three canal day today, yes. Well, we're here in Middlewich, and uh, we've been sat inside watching the beautiful sunset from the window and uh, not wanting to come out and video it because we're too busy watching foxes afloat. <laughs> Don't tell them. <laughs> and Well Deck Diaries. Uh, congratulations on your 10,000 guys, well yeah, done. Yeah, well done. But uh, look at that for a sunset. It changes by the second, doesn't it? It's just, the colours have almost gone now. It was so beautiful. So nothing much to report today. We did three locks, didn't we? Only three locks. Um, I did a mean bit of reversing into a... Yeah. It, it, it says I'm going on and on about it, but Blimey, it was never good. going to hear the end it of this. It was good. Somebody said, they, we can't do this. We're never going to get in this. Girl to abandon it. I said, no, no, we'll keep trying. Um, you did help me. I didn't do it alone. I did have a bit of help. But... Uh, we did end up a bit worn out and a bit stressed out afterwards so we've just moored up in the same space that we've been before on the um, aqueduct at Middlewich which is where there was a breach I think a couple of years ago and it's all nicely been repaired and we're here for a couple of days I think. But the temperature is nothing like it was last night it's uh, quite cool now isn't it? I might actually sleep. Yeah and this time last night we were just so hot and uh, it was still like 26, 27 degrees at uh, 8 o'clock, wasn't it? 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock? I think 10 o'clock at night, it was, yeah, 22 degrees, so a uh, hot night. Yes. Anyway, we're full of chips. We've had chippy tea from the chippy. The what massive, is it about chips? Massive pile of chips and last, curry sauce. Last time we had chips, and it was on the video, we decided to share a large portion of chips, and we just barely had enough. Mm. So we had two standard portions of chips today. The second lot is still unopened on the <laughs> boat with so many chips. But um, I think the doggies might have a few for breakfast. So... Tomorrow apparently is going to be wet all day, so we're just going to stay put and uh, get the newspaper. Oh, it's Saturday. Yeah, and uh, just chillax. Yes. Lots of midges here. It's buzzing around everywhere, aren't they? Look at them all. <laughs> Whoa, look at that lot. What's the point of them? Come on, you two. Talking of what's the point. We look a bit tired, it's because we had a late night last night. We'd, I let the dogs out for their last uh, minute wee, and as I was out, I could listen to the ducks. The ducks had been making so much noise all evening. All afternoon, hadn't they? Hadn't they? Yeah. Really, we just thought they were playing, didn't think Fighting anything of more it. Like. And then as, this is uh, car past 10, quarter to 11, I could hear these ducks, and then I could hear chicks calling, but it was echoing. So I've got the torch out and had a look over there we'll show you in a moment and there's a gully that goes oh. down the side of the canal a weir a weir and we could hear that these ducks were probably Stuck. trapped yeah so i told rich and like the hero he leapt out of bed <laughs> <laughs> didn't you it's only just got in bed and the thought of little ducklings trapped in a weir i just wouldn't be able to sleep so i had to get up so we had to walk 300 yards up the towpath across the farmer's bridge Climb over two gates. And, and it's raining and, and it's windy. raining and horrible. <laughs> Got the fishing net with me and a torch. And uh, fortunately the weir is dry. But it's about three foot deep and they just couldn't get out. And uh, so 
got into the weir and they all scarpered up to the other end through some railings that are at the other end of the weir and then down a drain pipe didn't they which is about that wide so uh, anyway I stood there shine, shining the uh, torch and they all came towards the light so I was able one by one to pick them off with the uh, net and put them back in the canal and they all cleared it off. I didn't even come back to say thank you no, the next morning, did they? Cheers. But, you know, we got a good night's sleep, covered in mud. Well, you say that. You were up at four in the morning for some reason and you looked out the window and they were all lined up on the edge, <laughs> the edge of the weir, They were all standing they? on the weir again. And we'd, I don't know why they went down there. They weren't tiny, tiny ducklings. They were a good few weeks old. But since then... Um, stop uh, no, it. carry on. Uh, hi. All right. Since then, um, <laughs> carry on. Since then, a boat came past us yesterday, and I know boaters complain about other boaters speeding, but I've never seen that was unbelievable. anything like it. We had waves, you know, a good six inches high as they sped past the boat, um, and you watch the water rushing over the weir, and we just wonder whether you know these little ducks had been perched on the edge. If a boat had gone past too fast, it would have just washed them over. But it got um, me instantly annoyed that boat yesterday. It came past so fast. I've never seen a boat going so fast. And a couple of senior people on the back who should know yeah. better. And I actually poked my head out of the cratch cover at the front and said, slow down at the top of my voice. And they were not impressed. He apologised, but his wife went, I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> Jess is about to roll in the canal. Jess, <laughs> come here. So anyway, yeah. we've just got a few miles to do today. One lock, which is just there. Yep. And uh, five miles. Four or five miles, just a steady cruise. Yep. She's been very naughty. Look at her dirty belly rolling She's in the gravel. Scratching your belly. Right, let's go. See you later. On my mind. Hippie boat. We did actually know that they were coming here 
Um, and these lovely people run this business, run their business from the boat. And you can tell us a little bit about it in a, in a minute. We've used them in the past because we know that their clothes are lovely. You do all sorts of stuff. You talk. Tell yes, us your we story. Yes, we do all sorts of stuff. So this is this is our fifth year now of um, trading from the boat. Um, and uh, we have kind of grown quite a lot. So we started off just doing some fair trade bags and a few clothes and things. And our clothing range has um, expanded enormously. Uh, mainly because we've started going over to India now to source uh, our own clothing and, and meet suppliers and form relationships with them so that we know where everything comes from. So everything has a little backstory now, which is quite interesting. So that you know that everything has come from a, a good business that's running yes. fairly and yes. is sourced properly. Yes. And, and people are paid properly, no child labour. Yeah. Um, so so we, we, we know where everything's come from um, and, and what's been really special is just meeting people over there and forming relationships with, with them that are mutually beneficial um, because they tend to be, I mean one of the people that we deal with, they're just like a little family that run a business in India and, uh, and we've formed friendships with these people as well which has been fantastic. Um, the problem is at the moment that obviously India is suffering quite badly because of the, the pandemic and uh, and financially i think um you know ec and economically it, it's really hit people hard because they haven't been allowed to open businesses so for instance one of our people that we were working with um who was a very talented designer he's had to let his tailor go because he couldn't open oh. his shop oh. so so yeah. there's implications which yeah. is really sad you know yeah. so at the moment that person we don't know if we're going to have a relationship with in the future because we don't know if he's going to survive or not really. Yeah. We're not going to be anywhere where you can find... Uh, yes. Just, I've forgotten your name, sorry. Pete. Jaws and Pete, sorry, yes. Jaws and Pete and the Hippie Boat. You can find them on Facebook. Yes. Uh, we have a Facebook page. Um, we have a website which is the Hippie Boat, spelled I-E, not Y, uh, .co.uk. Uh, we're on Instagram and we're on Twitter as well. So you can normally find us. And also you can email us as well at thehippieboat at gmail.com. In the middle of summer, we haven't got many summer clothes, so we've had a request have a little they've look. dug some stuff out for yeah, us. Yeah, we certainly have. So uh, you might see us all tarted up next time we're on the river boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show you some, some things now. So Lovely. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Put them on then. Yeah. Fran in heaven. Oh, yeah? Uh, love those. Really lovely. Look at that, huh? That is gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. Really beautiful. Yeah, what do you think? Very nice. I'm chuffed. Look, we're coming away with an armful of stuff and all handmade, uh, made in India. And I don't even know the name of the lady that's made this in Kerala. So, absolutely chuffed. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our little episode today. Not much been going on, to be honest. Uh, but hopefully, next week, by the time we see you, We'll be on the Klangothlan Canal. Yes, at long last. We seem to have been stuck around here for such a long time, but um, looking forward to it, aren't we? We are looking so much forward to it and uh, doing some walking and visiting towns as they're opening up again and pubs and. Uh, oh, yeah, pubs are open on Saturday, be Saturday, aren't they? Saturday pub opening. Although we had said we're going to leave it a week or so, haven't we, until it settles down. I'll go down sit in the there. garden and have a beer. Yeah, uh, be pushed, if won't it's, you? If it's like this. It's, <laughs> You've got to support the local businesses, haven't you? You do. <laughs> okay, so thanks very much. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, all that malarkey. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram, yes, floating our boat. And thanks so much to all our patron friends out there who are still contributing and helping this channel keep moving. It makes so much difference to us to improve our equipment, replace broken equipment. Fuel in the tank. Yeah. And Thank the, you. And the first beer we're going to have in a pub after lockdown. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye. Bye.